And good afternoon, good evening, or good night. I have no idea when you're listening, but whenever you're listening, I sure glad. I, I sure glad. <laughs> I sure am glad that you are. Um, that's probably going to stay in here. I think. I think yeah, we're good. Uh, yeah, we're we're uh, we're, we're not going to edit that out in post. Yeah, we're human. Um, and it took me about four seconds to mess up, but before I mess up anymore. Um, I just want to give a, a huge thanks to um, one of the sponsors of this um, podcast, eToro. Um, in case you haven't heard of it before, eToro is a social trading platform with a super clean, simple interface. And, and right now, one of the things that they're like making noise for is being able to trade cryptos. One of the best things about eToro is you can go on there and you can see the profiles and every move made by the most successful people currently trading via eToro. And you can even copy and paste their game plan into your portfolio and then scale it to however much you want to invest. Or if you just want to try to figure things out for yourself, they'll give you a hundred thousand virtual, not like Bitcoin virtual, but like virtual, literally worthless otherwise money, but then let you put that into their program and you can trade that fake money as if it were real. And you know, if, if, if you just want to start with 10,000 and see if you can end up with a million, then go for it. But it's, but it's a place for experiment. And, uh, one of these upcoming episodes, we are going to have a demo, but again, a huge thanks to eToro. And, um, let's just stay along the same lines here, Dan. Hey, yeah. Along the same lines, we don't have to talk about this, but it made me laugh. I read this story the other day about a guy who was trading and he thought he was trading with a virtual account, but he was trading with the real account and he ended up like negative half a million. And he, by the time he realized, so he's like, well, screw it. I'm just going to keep trading and see what I can do. And he ended up plus 11 billion. Billion? (laughs) Yeah. How? I, How did, I, I don't know. It, holy I don't cow, know. I could, 11 billion? I could be off by like a zero, but it was a lot of money. A oh, lot could be off by like a zero. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, geez. It's that, it that, was all like margin trading and like leverage. Uh, I don't know how all that stuff works. Um, anyway, what were you going to say? W- w- would that be similar, though, to when your sports gambling and then you bet on the underdog oh i've never sports gambled ever oh no i didn't mean you in particular (laughs) i just meant you you, um as in like you all where where i'm from we just say you and it means like yeah 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 (laughs) pittsburghers you know are use guys or yinzers yeah yeah, they'll say um for me it's it's always just been you to refer to a group of more than one person, but you know, just just when the the generic nameless faces out there are sports gambling, and and you'll bet on the underdog, and then if they take a lead, like in a basketball game or something, oh, you can yeah, then yeah. bet on the overdog while they're losing, and you end up with positive odds on both sides and guaranteed to win money. I don't know if that's what margin trading is or not. Man, this financial stuff I never understood. Well, margin trading is just on on loan. You the the exchange will loan you money or other people on the exchange will loan you money based on your reputation. I believe they can like choose who mm. to approve and who not to. Don't quote me on that. I was going to say as well, I, there's so many like derivatives and then, you know, everything bears interest and like we, we've had a couple conversations about like w- when is a dollar real? Like, oh, <laughs> does dude, it have I to be a paper doll? Like, man, I, I, don't I don't know if, if we can get into all of yeah, that. Yeah, we probably shouldn't. But, but all that I was just saying. Hang on, hang on. I might have to at least explain the premise. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't care. Your show. Um. So I don't. I don't. I honestly don't know the answer. Uh, Jake, who hosted a previous episode, um. He insists that he knows the answer, though. And I, well, what I was talking about is, is there a paper dollar to represent every dollar that people use that you don't see? Whether it's in a credit card or a direct deposit or, you know, I, I would say probably 98% of, 
of my money I never touch as like a yeah. paper dollar. At least, yeah, probably. Um, now, unless you're on the Dave Ramsey plan, putting money into envelopes, which um, I used to do, and I really should get back to because because it is kind of a different feeling watching the cashier pull paper money out of your hand as opposed to just swiping. I but, know a guy that does the envelope system, but instead of actual envelopes, he has like five different debit cards. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, when, when when I was told that, I I think the number thirteen was sent oh, and just like thirteen debit cards and thirteen checking accounts yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, but do you is, think you could get like the three hundred dollar bonus on each one? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> That's a good idea, though. Um, yeah, checking accounts, you can get bonuses like crazy on, but you ever go to open a savings account and they'll make you have oh, yeah. like 250,000 in there <laughs> for at least three months to get like an $80 bonus. Yeah, yeah, it's bad. Um, is there a paper dollar representing every dollar that's in the economy? Maybe we should just tell them to tell us what they think. Yeah, I think that's what we're getting at. All right. So what what was your decision on whether there's a paper dollar to represent? So I think I basically said no because, you know, if it, it, let's say I have 100 paper dollars. I put it all into a bank account. At that moment, all of my $100 are represented by 100 paper dollars. The bank, okay. the bank is going to take 90 of those and give them to some my neighbor, to you, to buy a house. So... All of a sudden, I have $100 in the bank account. You have $90. Well, you you spend it on the house, and some whoever you gave it to has $90, whoever you bought the house from. Mm-hmm. So that person, call him call him Al, uh, Bob. Normally, it's Bob and Alice in these examples. So now Bob has $90. I have $100, and there, but there's really only 100 in the bank. Unless what you could do is subtract the debt. You have $90 worth of debt. If you subtract that debt, all we're back to $100. Yeah. I mean, you're already starting to lose me. <laughs> also, um, I don't know how trade with other countries like. Uh, whoa, whoa. Where did the other countries come from? What do you mean? You, like when when we. When Walmart gets stuff shipped in from China, they're paying them somehow, right? Yeah. <laughs> what? That wasn't part of the example, though. The example is way simpler than that. Yeah, but I'm I'm saying um, there's even dollars that we might like lose track of. I'm assu- there's no way we have a paper dollar for every dollar that we oh, owe China. Yeah. Lose track of? I guess I don't know if a bank. If if they were if they're, I could see people losing track of dollars. But once it's I in a bank, dude, I, I think that we're we, we probably owe China so much. Like we have absolutely no plan if they want it back. Besides, go to war. Like, yeah, but it, like uh, so. You know, I I think the U.S. government hopes no matter, you know, if you're like a Republican or you're a Democrat, regardless of if you think they should be spending the money or not. I mean, I think the hopes is, is that you would be able to balance it so that there's a surplus in the American budget and we can start like paying China for these things. And just like the way that trade works out would maybe just like erase it. But now that I'm thinking about it, why would China just like let it go and hope things like worked out? But I I, I really don't know what America well, is about to do. We support them just as much as they support us. Like we buy all their stuff and they make all our stuff. Both of those things, like we support each other. Yeah, but they're, they're providing a service. We are giving them a good in return, a good in terms of uh, money. Shh. Sure. I don't know if anyone would call money a good, but sure. I don't... Well, exchange money for goods. I don't know, dude. <laughs> so money is totally separate from a good. Let's, plus, dude, plus let's not get hung up on that. Let's talk about... 
Well, what, what, what? No, we absolutely are losing money to China. That's that's how we have a federal deficit is because we pay them. <laughs> I never said we weren't losing money. All I said is money that's is not a, a good. No, but before that, you were going on. Before I misspoke about money being a good, you had some problem with me saying that we owe China money. I never said anything. You're the one that brought up China. All I did was <laughs> you bought a house from Bob. That was my whole example. Okay, so even in your example, dude. Well, hang on. Bob's got some money. You've got some money. Alice has. I'm all. All I'm saying is, dude, is that we we like the crux of my argument is that we do so much business online that the Federal Reserve or the banks or the government or whoever is in control of all this. Um, they're just assuming that everyone is not going to come to the bank and withdraw everything yeah. that they have all at once. Yeah. No, I'd agree. Um, That's, this is why I love Bitcoin. We, we we know that would be a problem, right? If, if well, yeah. not me and you. So people, many, many more people with many of that group of people being made up of people with more money than us go to the bank and demand all of their money right then is probably not going to happen. Right. So I think that's case closed end of the argument. If we had enough, like, even if it was perfectly distributed, like, they knew the exact, like, people, every bank had the same amount of money, and somehow people funneled to those banks perfectly balanced. I, I don't think that there's any way that you could orchestrate getting all this money to all these banks. And yeah, because in our, in our little example, the only way Bob can get his... So I deposit a hundred, you borrow ninety and buy a house from Bob. That's all that happened in my example. If so, I have a hundred in the bank. I could go request cash. Bob has ninety in the bank. He could go request cash, but there's only a hundred in the bank. The only way you could balance that out is if the bank calls in your debt. They need your negative ninety dollars mm-hmm. to pay you. And the only way you could get that money is by selling your house. Yeah. Um. So, when when that house is built, that's just like created value, right? So now is is it, it's like something that you're trading with, like money, right? Sure. Yeah. Like you trade the house, or at least I mean, people all the time they do they do trades. You could you could trade a. a truck for a baseball bat that'd be kind of a lopsided trade but you could do it there was no money involved. depends what baseball bat what if it was like babe ruth oh yeah it, uh, yeah i i mm, i would probably rather have an autographed baseball bat by babe ruth instead of like a decent truck uh i'll just take the truck because i don't care about the bat i it doesn't even have to be a decent truck like i'll just even if, if even if i yeah, I'm not. Well, what spending. do you mean you don't care? But you don't think that Babe Ruth transcends baseball, and and he's like a like I I don't give a, a frick about 1960s history. But if I had some uh you know John F Kennedy's brain matter had been preserved from his unfortunate accident, and I somehow had that, I'd be like, this is sweet, man. Yeah, no, I, 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 I'm, a, I'm a numbers man. I'm just going to take the truck so I don't have to buy a car. Or yeah. What if you you already had a car? It was an okay... Like, this truck is I'd an obvious truck. upgrade. Oh, then I'd keep the truck and scrap the other car. So, so now at this point, you're saying you would rather have some scrap metal than Babe Ruth's autographed baseball No, bat. money from the scrap. I would take it to the scrapyard and they. Why wouldn't you just sell the same thing? That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I would get rid of the extra car and take the money. What it comes down to is, I would not spend forty grand on a Babe Ruth baseball bat. That's that's the question we're talking about. Is now I I've been thinking about this a lot lately. With I I have tickets to go see my favorite band of all time, Queen, next week. Oh, I thought you were going to say the Wiggles. The Wiggles, yes. No, Queen. Now, remind me not to lose track of how the <laughs> baseball bat fits in here. Okay. Okay. But these, I, I, um, 
I really love Queen. So, you know, when this tour was announced, it was even before their movie Bohemian Rhapsody came out. So I went online and I, sh- I if I was like a real fan, I probably would have paid the $10 for the early access code, but I just found it online and I didn't pay them. But so I went on and I was able to order tickets to their tour a day early before they went on sale to the general public. And so I did, I did that and I got us really, really good seats at a, well, what I thought was the best value seat. It's in, it's in the top tier, but it is dead center. Um, and by top tier, I actually mean upper deck, which is the lower tier in terms of like okay. tiers of value, but I'm, I'm sitting in the upper deck. Now I got these tickets for like $75. I'm going to see them in Phoenix and then I'm flying across the country to see my family and Pittsburgh is in that same general area. I'm going to go see them in Pittsburgh again. Now for both of these shows, um, I've, I've got really decent seats that I got for a good price and In between when I bought these and now, the movie Bohemian Rhapsody came out, which was one of, if not, well, it 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 was not maybe 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 the best like original movie of last year. I mean, I I would imagine that Star Wars like destroyed it at the box office, probably. But this was one of the most popular movies of last year. Now these seats, anything you can find on the secondary market. Is this now? This doesn't necessarily mean that they're selling, but they're listed for maybe like three hundred fifty. Um, anything comparable to me, you're talking like four or five hundred dollars a seat. After this movie came out, people remembered how much they love the band Queen, dude. Queen, Queen rocks. Queen's awesome. Um, now I'm in a predicament. I, I do I sell these tickets? Yeah. <laughs> you would. <laughs> yeah. Do I sell these tickets for like $400? And if I don't, or let's just, let's just say I was able to get 500 out of them. All right. Right. And I paid 150 for these. Okay. Now, I really, really, really do not want to sell them. I have them listed now for close to $400 a piece and nobody should pay that much, but I listed them for that much because I kind of inside didn't really want them to sell. Mm-hmm. Let's let's say a more reasonable number I think I could get for them is if I charge two fifty dollars a piece and then StubHub annihilates it and takes $100 of that and I get 400 Like, if I don't do that and, and I'm going to... The con- I'm using the tickets myself. Have I paid seventy five dollars per seat because that's what I originally did, or am Ooh. I paying two hundred fifty dollars because I think that's what they're worth now? That's I feel you. Th- what reminded me of that was the bat. Yeah, and like, is it different if you're getting it for free versus are you paying for or like under what circumstances? Man, I don't, I don't know, man. <laughs> You you don't know, I guess. I mean, I guess it would have to be four hundred. Like that's what you could have four hundred dollars, or you could have the concert. Like, well, same logic. I I could have bought the ticket for one hundred fifty for the pair, or I could not have. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> Um, this is why the banks can't keep track of who has can't all the keep money. Track of who has the money because no one can decide who wants their queen tickets and uh, who doesn't. Um, but yeah, I I I think I'm going to go. I, I so you have them at four hundred a piece. Um, no, that was in this hypothetical example. Say I make four hundred dollars total. You now, said you have them on right now. At a really high price. I, I have them listed on right now at like $350 a piece. Um, now, there are some that are as low as like 190 a piece. However, they're like literally behind the band. Like it's partial view. Huh. You're going to get blocked by some of the backdrop of the stage. And when what you can see, you're just going to be seeing the backs of the band. Got it. Now, mine are in the upper section, 
the higher of the two sections, but it's right in the middle and it's, it's only like nine rows back and they're probably like close to 40. Okay. (laughs) So even though I have them listed at like $360 a piece right now, StubHub is still rating those as a good deal. Yeah, well, of course it's a good deal. Somebody they want somebody to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but they they also don't want their um, the ones who are buying the tickets to feel ripped off. You know what I mean? Because they're they're going to be shopping around and going to other sites and stuff like that. So so they they can't just lie. I, I think they would at least be somewhat truthful on that. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure somewhat. Yeah. <laughs> Like they're not just gonna say that. I don't know. Yeah, it's, 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 on the one hand, it's like they're not just gonna put excellent on every single one. But there are companies that do that. I read. I, I read an article about like they're called dark patterns on websites, where like it's just like subtle, like slightly malicious like behaviors where like they automatically check the yes, please send me updates box. Oh, um, that's a okay. dark pattern, and and like. On on e-commerce sites, like sometimes they'll say like, "Oh, Alice from Michigan bought this twelve minutes ago." And, yes, and they, they did not. You're right, right, right. Or there'll be like a countdown timer, like we'll reserve your cart for forty nine minutes, yeah. and then it's like an hour later, we'll reserve your cart for just fifteen more minutes, <laughs> and then you yeah. ignore it again, and then they send you an email: we've extended the cart reservation. <laughs> Um, I was actually watching, um, a video today on some of those tactics, um, because in, in my day to day, uh, recently I've been in e-commerce. So I was looking for things where maybe I could take this example that was obviously bad and put the same idea to work in like a fair way if that makes sense yeah yeah. like you know like if you force someone to buy something or buy you know like if you if you told them it was like a five dollar thing but then you charged their credit card fifty dollars and didn't ship it no that is that is not (laughs) at all no 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 dude this (laughs) that's just theft (laughs) That's just that's just like you've committed a felony. <laughs> what I'm saying is 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 something like um Coke move their bottles down from bottles of Coke um that you would get in the six pack used to always be twenty four ounces. Ooh yeah. Two two cans worth. And now they're like twenty or sixteen. Yeah. Um, Eighteen maybe. But, ice cream? It's like used to be like a pint. Now it's like like 0.95 or something. Yeah. At gas stations with that extra little nine they put on all their prices. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, what What I was thinking about doing is, um, like you said, something with a um, like a countdown of how many they have left. What I was looking at is like, well, what what if we did that and we were just actually truthful about it? But then the problem becomes is I never believe it on other websites. Maybe then the 15 other websites I see with that on, one of them was being truthful for some reason, but I didn't believe it. Right, right, right. But, you know, I was thinking like maybe maybe we could do something like even if we have a million of these in stock which like that's a little bit beyond my pay grade (laughs) stock and a million of something, but let's just, you know, say we did just list it as a million. And if we have 980,000 left, fine, but we'll let the number go down and just see what happens. Maybe that signals to people with that many available that other people don't want it. Or maybe they'll look at it and go like, hey, this is a popular thing, like this many people, or I legitimately did see a higher number there yesterday. No, I got you. You All you have to do is set up a shell corporation, buy the warehouse next to yours, mm-hmm. then just always give them like 99% of your stock, 
So then your real honest to goodness stock is three items left. They're running out fast. But every time someone orders, you can just get one from next door. And now you still have three items left. Yeah. So you can constantly say that that truthfully on your website. That would run into a situation um, like you were saying of just kind of being a dick online. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Well, it doesn't matter who who has it. I I, I do know what you're talking about, though. And um, I, I think stuff like that is getting better. But I know, like... One of the most infuriating things is trying to like, um, click on a, on a button and then it would automatically shift your mouse or your finger to an ad. What? I've never seen that. You've never, you've never like been trying to click on an ad. Say, say. Oh, you mean. Yeah, if it's like a really crappy website, yes, and you're like trying to close out ads, yes, but but it, um, uh, you didn't actually press there. It makes it look believable. I don't know if they they don't actually move your mouse that I've seen, but they. Well, I I know that they can make it so um, jumbled. You know, and just like there yeah, are yeah, thirty yeah. different false things over here. No, I'm I'm talking about like when you're pretty sure your mouse is on that little sliver of X that you're yeah. supposed to click, and then I know I know exactly they can register mean. it on the website as you having clicked somewhere else, and they make you think it's your fault. You're just like, oh, like yes, it was so close. I maybe just moved that amount, and uh. You know, that was a small target to hit anyways. Right, right, right. But I, I, I mean, at least my, um, public relations teacher, professor in college was pretty sure that that was an intentional ta- tactic. Oh, I'm yeah. More, no, uh, it's, a, I'm a web developer and it's a combination of things. So 90% of the time, I don't think, I don't think it's like technically malicious. They're not like dropping code. That is going to move your mouse. Like, I, I don't think they're doing that. I think 90% of the time, it's just there's like 12 ads in the same place. And you can't tell what's what. And some of them didn't load, so they're transparent. You're, you're telling me that on a website like that, you have never been pretty sure that you clicked on uh, I'm the correct there. button? I'm getting there. What can happen is, with there's like 12 ads, especially if you're trying to watch like a video, just like theoretically, that might be on some website. And there's like, t- lit- maybe not 12, like, you know, you, three, three, a yeah, lot of them will have three. Them. Yeah, it's like and like, they're different ups. shapes and, yeah. and then one of them might not load. So it's like, there's a blank one. And then behind that is another one. And then you think you're clicking on one, but there's, there's like a broken one on top of it. Yeah. I think that's a big chunk of it. If it is malicious, I'll say again, I don't think anyone, no, you, I don't even, as a developer, I don't even think it's possible to move the mouse just from a browser you'd have to like install malware or something i don't i I don't know dude i think it would be as simple as you 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 couldn't build a code where if you wanted to you make everything backwards and you make their mouse go backwards not not to my knowledge i mean maybe like if you had like flash player installed you could do a lot of because i mean it, it I'm sure that there have been like video games or online games where it will change your input. What do you mean change your input? Like, hey, I don't know. Say say it's say it's like some game, some shooter where for some reason you're also able to like Grand Theft Auto or something. It'll be way harder to aim after he's been intoxicated they have to they have to do something in there to change the control of your mouse they're not changing your mouse movements they're just changing the way the game responds like say say you switched your controls for like you inverted the x axis so like you slide your mouse right and it looks left yeah okay so you're saying that the difference is is that the, the, game, the game is able to adapt okay and so like it for example if they Someone please call me if I'm wrong, but I'm like 99% sure as a web developer, you can't move someone's mouse. You can, you can simulate a click on anything on the page, 
So without moving your mouse, I could click a, a link or a button. Pretty, I mean, I could click a button that might submit a form or something like that. So could could you set it up so that when I click the X, the legitimate X to close the ad, that the 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 computer a millionth of a second before it recognizes the uh, right. the click it, it tells you to click on the wrong thing so that depends yes you you can simulate a click but it depends can you can you simulate a simulate a click while timing it to their mouse click yeah, or with yeah. their mouse you could you could say it's literally it's it's an event called on click when you it's on click of the x button you could click something else on the page it's that simple it's like it's like literally like 12 characters okay so so then yes i'm guessing and even if you can move somebody's mouse based on you not having any idea if you could it would be ten thousand times harder than simulating a click yeah so so they so they just simulate a click at a point that's kind of close to the x they know you were going for right the thing is and so that's why you feel like oh like they may have moved my mouse yeah I don't need to get into web developer stuff much, but there is there are certain t- the majority of ads that you see on the internet they they're called iframes. It's just a web page within a web page. Mm-hmm. Those you cannot simulate clicks. So if you're loading a different web page, which usually is an ad in the middle of another web page, I can't simulate a click inside of that box for security reasons. You you having any idea what you're talking about right now compared to my level of understanding is a very good representation of why this is your entire network <laughs> and I just have one of the shows. All the like, I, the because, basicest terms, web page within a web page. You can't click that. Yeah, dude, but cool. Even, <laughs> even working on a computer mostly all day, uh, I I have absolutely no idea. Like you, you may have... As I, I probably could have understand you speaking in French better than what you just said right you, there. You know what an iframe is? Like if you if you embed YouTube, that's an iframe. I didn't know that until now. Okay. Well, you've at I least thought that seen was an code. embed. It it depends. That's what I'm saying. There's different kinds. Like if it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I haven't been doing that a ton lately, but I used to work in in WordPress, and usually when you would go to find the embed code, it would give you. This was maybe more a few years ago. I haven't seen it super recently. It would give you an embed option or an iframe option. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But then the, the, that's just one option, though. You could be just an image. Like, I, like, So say I embedded YouTube in an iframe. You can't simulate a click on the play button if it's in an iframe. Okay, so you you can't simulate a click on a play button in an iframe? Right. Is your cell phone provider and or the government listening to you through your phone? Through my phone. Through your phone. I I lean pretty heavily towards no. And I, I, I've covered this on my show quite a bit. And... I, we've talked about it some. Yeah, I know we've talked about it, and I think that you're absolutely bananas, dude. And this thing that just was admitted today by Google is just another uh, another reason. Oh, I'm no, right. no, no, no. Voice assistants are completely different than phones. No, they're not, dude. They're microphones on your okay. person. Yeah, but. And if if you ask me if you're listening, the purpose of a voice assistant is to record audio literally 24 hours a day. Literally. That's pretty much what you are telling Siri to do as soon as you enable it. Hey, Siri, make sure you're listening to me literally all day so you know if I'm saying Siri or not. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Okay, so... I didn't also, finish. okay, before we get too far into this, um, I don't know exactly when this episode's going to come out, but as far as I know, it is today, like from recording, it's, it's the day that Google finally admits that they were listening through Google Home when maybe they shouldn't have been, is like the layman's way uh, to put that, like... 
they they admitted and i think alexa admitted before too that like yes they do listen to things they have to because of commands and well, and stuff like that but it, it was kind of a given like they're yeah they have a team of people that will because it, it's in like the terms of service and whatnot we're going to collect your audio and you can delete it whenever you want but we're going to collect it and it was kind of a given that they're going to listen to it and maybe especially if like if it misunderstood you, it might send an audio sample and someone would listen to it and try to guess what you said and see how accurate the the voice reading was. That, I think, was kind of a given. I don't think anyone would have doubted that. Google admits workers listen to private audio recordings from Google Home smart speakers. What was new is somewhere in this article, it was they specifically said it was abused, like it was leaked by somewhere in, in uh, Dutch. What is that? What? Where? Dutch, where? The Netherlands? Dutch? There we go. Holland. That's, that's what there I'm are going multiple for. names for it, and you couldn't get either of them. That's why I was asking. They're Dutch people, but anyway, it said they, they, it didn't. It said they were. It was abused, mm. or leaked, or something along those lines. I think the first part was a given. They, it says in their terms of service that they will. It says it on every single Android phone. Like we're going to collect usage st- statistics, and and. To you know, and and they're telling Google what percent of your day you spend on what apps and all that kind of stuff. That was a given. What's the news is, even though you're right, this headline doesn't quite say it. The news is that it was leaked, or you know, they were listening to more than they really should have. Yeah, yeah, it was it was it was abusing the trust. Well, for sure. Yeah, the thing with the phone too, I was going to say, is it it's. I don't remember what I was going to say. <laughs> the thing with the phone thing, how is that? You're trying to justify to me that the the phone is different to, than than the Google Home. Oh, no, no, no. And, I, and I'm saying they're not. They're both microphones that follow you they around can. all day. They can. They can, without a doubt. This was one of the first things I was going to say. Without a doubt, your phone, your smart speakers, even your computer, I have zero doubt that the government has the hacking skills to just pretty much get into whatever they want pretty much instantly. Like that, that iPhone that was encrypted, they eventually got into zero doubt that they can. The reason I would say they don't to the average person is just because it's, they don't have the time or the interest. Like, what do they care about me? I pay my taxes. That's all they want. So I don't think, and and then the, 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 the corporations, mm-hmm. same thing. Like, yeah, wh- wh- what are they going to hear all day? Well, right now we're live anyway, so they okay, could already well, hear this. Just, just, just say, man, that um, um, and that's some some me. someday you're running for office, all right, or you get elected Gee, to. That's be... why I said the average person. If they're like the president, if they want his audio, yeah, I think they can, and they probably do. And I don't know, dude, do, do, like, or just say you started running for it, right? And then Google's like, oh, hey, dude, I remember 15 years ago, this guy was searching some really weird stuff. Like, let's ruin his career. Yeah. They they could absolutely do that. And I think that somebody coming up soon who grew up with the internet because really politicians now weren't googling when they were 14 you know can is is that private is 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 my browsing history for sale oh for sale the biggest way it's for sale is just through ads they they you know amazon google they all track your browsing and then they remark it to you. So in that sense, absolutely, it's for sale so, already. So then why couldn't they use that against somebody? They could. They could. Why, well, who said they wouldn't? Right. Okay. So they could, So so on the internet, you think somebody can get screwed over. In Google Home, you think somebody can get screwed over. Why do you think cell phones is I any never different? Said, I said they absolutely can. I just don't think they do. You you don't do you think they're just that good at guessing or they're using 
they're using things that you say as, um, you know, uh, markers to sell to advertising companies. What's the question? Do I think that's what they're doing? Hey, hey, okay. So I was just talking earlier um, about how much a slow pitch softball bat would cost and how much I spent on it. Do you think that if I go to my phone tomorrow and I'm getting ads for slow pitch softball bat, which I, I yeah, I don't think they do that yet. They they absolutely you don't feel would. like that's ever happened to you. Or something that yeah, you oh, I have, felt like it for sure. That you have not had anything to do with your phone or the internet. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I've been there. I've had those moments where it's like I don't think I. All we did was talk about that. And you think that they just are One of so them was good? A flight. You think that some of them are just so good with their analytics that they would be able to tell you were expecting to take a flight to this random place you've never been to. Right. I think, no, no, I think that's a coincidence. What, what was the flight for? It it was between, it was a city that I was not in to another city that I was not in that we had literally the night before we had talked about, I was on the phone. We talked about it on the phone. Not not just around the phone. Okay. That, so that's a f- small factor. But yeah, we just talked about it. Said, oh yeah, we could book a flight from here to here. And then the next day I saw an ad for it. I think that's a coincidence. I mean... You think it's coincidence. Yeah. I uh, Man, it, it's... After I, Google admits this. No, I know. Especially on my own show. I, people know I'm all about privacy I do way more than the average person for my passwords or whatever. Like, I'm all about... I don't even run Windows anymore. I don't use Google Chrome. I'm all about my privacy for all these reasons. And I still, like... what? They don't care about your audio. They don't care what we're saying in this room right now. At the moment. I think one day they will. They'll figure out how to store it all properly and properly interpret what you're saying. They'll figure out how to map it into ads that you might like. Zero doubt that we'll get there eventually. I think at the moment, they just don't care. They already have everything they need. Your location, 99 times more valuable than your audio stream. Your um, your Facebook friends list, your contact list, they know what Wi-Fi networks you're connected to at what times. They know what apps you're using at what time of the day, all within their terms of service. And all of that, like they, it's not a secret. They have all your web history. They store purchases that you've made five years ago. I can see on Google every single time I've ordered Domino's mm-hmm. because it just they send me an email and it goes into my purchases. Okay. I, so I'm all about privacy. I know what they're capable of. I I do take privacy measures, and I still just think they don't care about your audio stream at the moment. They've got tons of other data to use and learn and handle. Like I just don't think the the sounds in your room. Here's what they. Here's what I bet they would use it for. Facebook, I could see doing this, sending out audio bursts to figure out like what you're close to, which what what other phones you're nearby. I mean, they already have your location. Okay. Hang on, but before you get too far okay. off track, dude, okay. you need to explain to me why they don't care about your audio. It's just not a big deal yet. Like, they already have all the other it's, data. It's not a big deal. So, Google's going to risk their stocks in, in their well-being in doing it. Obviously, Google thought that this stuff was important. That's why they violated their customers' privacy with the Google Home to get their audio. I think that depends on what really went wrong here. Maybe we don't have all the details because what does they mean by abuse? Like, were there just a couple of employees that thought it was funny because they heard Donald Trump say something to his Siri? Yeah, go down to the second half here. One of these, there it is. We, this is a statement from Google. One of these reviewers has violated our data security policies by leaking confidential Dutch audio data. I mean, 
that's why I, I don't think they're doing it yet. They didn't. I think it was just some stupid employee that thought it was funny because they heard some audio and shared it. They sent it in an email to their friend. Uh, maybe it was malicious. Maybe, you know, say they did. So, hear- so you think that they're actually doing nothing with it and they're just recording no, it they're for using the fun it, of it? They're using it for training their AI. They'll, they'll have humans listen to the recording and compare it to the AI, feed all that data into what the AI got right, what the AI got wrong. That's what they're, that, that's, that's what I'm saying. It's like in their terms of service that they will collect data for quality assurance and whatnot purposes. All right, man. And yes, I, but, but that's still bad. Oh yeah, for sure. I would agree. And I, another thing I would say that they do do is any, not, not 24 seven, but anything that you, any snippets that you say to it after you say whatever Siri, Google, and then they record it and respond that I think they do store because you can still, you can go to Google and listen to everything you've ever said to Google that they store. And yes, I absolutely, you can listen to everything you say to Google. I think it's like my com or something. Huh. And that I do believe already they use for advertising without a doubt. If you ask Google for a flight price, absolutely you're going to get ads for that no question why would google do that for ads if a phone company wouldn't a phone company listening i bet so you're you're asking why a normal phone company doesn't listen to your calls I'm saying, dude, that there is a very, very good chance that my phone hears me thinking about something and then sells that to Facebook for me to get an ad for an extremely relevant item the next day. I think they do only when you talk to it. I don't think they do that 24 hours a day. So you've had to have said, hey, Siri... Very recently? Recently? Yeah. Like it listens maybe for like until you finish a sentence, until it detects silence. And then you're just assuming that the audio files would just get too big and monotonous for them to want to just keep recording all the time. Exactly. Exactly. They're not interested in 24-hour audio. That's exactly what I'm saying. I do think they're interested in audio. I think they absolutely store anything you say to Google like directly. But no, you're, that's what I'm saying is they don't care about 24-hour audio. Well, regardless, you know, wh- whether whether it's just like an inconvenient invasion of privacy or it's something that somebody is absolutely going to use in a very bad way, there are varying degrees to it, but we can agree whether it's just being slightly uncomfy or something really bad happening because of it we don't love the idea of people being able to listen in yeah and that, on that's you in your home that's what i meant when i was saying like i'm all about privacy i don't i don't I, I have a google home and i unplugged it for and i you know made my own open source google home Okay, so so your own open source Google Home does everything no. that a Google Home does? It could. It could. I just haven't set it all up yet. You just haven't? It's because it, you have to be a developer, really, to set it up. Okay. But you're you're saying that it is a possibility to have things with the same functions as a Google Chrome. The, the, the same, Google the same general... Home automation and stuff like that as a Google Chrome. It can do anything you want. Literally, you you train it yourself. You put in the sentences that you might say, and then you connect it through another open source service. You connect it to, oh man, they have literally, it's called Home Assistant. I love it. They're growing super open source. There's like tons of chat room where people are constantly talking about updates every week. But there are literally like thousands of of integrations. I have it hooked up to my vacuum, all my lights, my thermostat, uh, the weather. So you're living like the Jetsons and you're 100% sure that this is not... 
Yes. Uh, I could, I could disconnect my internet and still, I mean, it wouldn't be able to get the weather, but I could disconnect my internet and still talk to my, you know, turn my lights on and off. So, so offline home automation, dude, do you think that there's a market for this? Is, is this a potential future? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I've thought about doing it myself. Okay. You've, you've thought about doing it yourself. So the, well, no, I have done it for myself. You've, yeah. Yeah. But you, you're saying you've thought about setting it up for other people. Yeah. 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 And cause you do, you do it. It's getting easier. Like I said, there's updates every week, but really like there's some dashboardy type stuff. You know what? The, the voice, the voice assistant part is a lot easier to set up. You literally can just type in sentences, but even then it's all developer type API stuff. It, it you really have to, you, you have to know code. I'm just going to say it. You, if you didn't know how to write at least a couple lines of really simple code, you wouldn't be able to do this. Well, what is really simple to you? So because, really because simple. I took like an HTML class in 2000. Yeah. I'd say that's, that's really simple. In Maybe high school. Yeah, in high school. That's it was way simpler back then. Yeah, I mean, what what we used to do is we just had to get out these books and copy the the books. I did that in, in, in like 3rd grade. <laughs> I I'd go to half price books and like get like a textbook for a programming language. And then go home and just like... But do, you just did that for fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This was an entire class. I just sat there and had to do that. And I think I was a junior because then I did a video game design course oh, the nice. next year. I did that too. That was, that was fun stuff. I wasn't third grade. I don't want to be... I'm not that much. It was mm, seventh, sixth, seventh grade when That's I started okay, programming. Dude. Yeah. Like third grade... Dude, third grade me would have murdered me in chess, man. When a third grader wants to get into something, they they do it. I I used to just be so passionate about things uh, when I was a kid. I absolutely there's if that's what you were interested in, a third grader could be coding. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, I I, I could go down the trail. I I was reading some articles today about very young people that were like hacking very big sites like teenagers. <laughs> but anyway, um, no, I want to go back to whatever we were just talking about. The home automation. Yes. That it, the type of code you would need to know. Okay. I'm just, I'll just, I'll just explain it. Even the non coding parts for the, for the voice assistant. It's getting better. So it's actually, you can just click on other people's apps and just click install and it might do, there's a very, very few like fully working apps out there. Like maybe like tell me the weather type apps or like ask me a trivia question okay, type okay. apps. Okay. But there are very few fully working ones yet. But to do anything beyond just click on an app that might work and install it, beyond that, yeah. It's not exactly code. It's just kind of like configuration. Like, yes, you have to type in the sentences, but then you have to map that. So, so can is is there a place where I can like go online and um, see your vision or or what what you're gonna provide for people? My personal, what I want to do. Yeah, I mean, I, I it doesn't exist at the moment. It could sometime, but I. I I do have cloudfree.tech which is like I said it's not it does, it just goes to my bitcoin podcast network at the moment just cuz you don't have anywhere else to point it. I don't know it, I'm I I don't I was just on another show earlier today and saying how little time I have lately for different things. I don't have know how much time I have to build or install a fancy website. I might just put up contact info or something at some yeah. point, but if it is ever a thing, I'm, I'm looking at the camera, even though we're just doing audio, if it is ever a thing, yeah, cloudfree.tech is what I might do one day. And like I said, I'm I, now, well, if, well, if, if anyone's interested in that for Dan Brown to, to come to you and set up, Oh yeah, I would totally, if anyone wants like, 
Man, well, okay, dude. I'm just uh, if 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 I'm somebody and I want a Google Home that the oh, government yeah. isn't stealing my info, can you do it for me? And what yeah. number do I call? Yeah. So I mean, I guess the average person would just want about what I have, which is you know, turn my lights on and very off. very um, simple uh, tasks are just completely automated. Yeah, lights, ask for the weather. I can tell it I can ask it to play something on my TV. So so you you can you get your electric vacuum out and going. Oh yeah. Just yeah, on this yeah. thing you never have to worry about vacuuming your floors. Yeah. You could talk to it. Yeah. You can talk to the vacuum. Well, yeah, tell it to start or stop. Holy Toledo dude. You're talking to a the, vacuum there, now. I should have said this when I first started talking about these they're called platform or integrations. Hang on, dude. Did you ever see the Brave Little Toaster? No. You never saw the Brave Little Toaster? No. Oh man, one one of the one of the main dudes was a talking vacuum. Um <laughs> wait. But he was like a big like Kirby, like Hoover looking motherfucker. <laughs> You know I don't what know. I'm Maybe saying? I saw a clip. I, why do I feel like I remember a talking? And, the, and there, there was like a blanket dude, <laughs> and they were like trying to get across the country because their owner went to college. It, it was like a Toy Story for emo kids. Yeah, I don't think I, I, I don't think I watched that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I can talk dude, to the, my vacuum. The Brave Little Toaster is a classic, man. Yeah, he no, he's he's not like a R- Roomba like AI like he's he's just a Hoover looking dude like I was saying except they're like animatronic. Is it like is it almost as good as the um is like the talking vacuum as good as the talking skateboard? The talking skateboard of <laughs> Danny DeVito? Yeah, skateboard kid. We watched that John Tron video and that got me going that got me going pretty good. John Tron, he, he said some weird things in the past that that we looked up and you were and you were Oh yeah. And you just, were you were saying, yeah, he just said some stuff. I don't want to get into it, but it, it was involving race and um I think we maybe he misspoke. Maybe he actually meant it, but he he said some things that were a little weird. Um, but dude, he he's really really funny. Oh yeah, I um, mean, and, there've and, been a few uh, gutter balls, but I'd say like seventy percent of his stuff is pretty hilarious. Yeah, a few gutter balls. Like yeah. there, there are some John Tron you didn't like. Yeah, I mean, we've watched so much now. I don't know. Like, even the la- the very last one we watched was a little weird. It was just like about an old mm, Goosebumps or something. Uh, I didn't mind Goosebumps, dude. Did uh, did you, did you grow up with like that era of Nickelodeon? No, I was Jimmy Neutron, SpongeBob. All right. Yeah, that, that was about right for me i was maybe like a little older than those i don't know i was born in 92 but spongebob came out in 99 i would have to imagine that like a 10 year old me thought spongebob was pretty good you know what i'm saying yeah um but yeah dude the the 90s were kind of a weird time especially because i was usually like four years old during the (laughs) 90s Uh. do you do you remember anything about the 90s Oh, no. I mean, six years old. No. 94. You were born in 94? Yeah. No, I don't remember anything. Well, let's see, man. Literally I, nothing. I was in second grade in the 90s. And if you were born in 94, what what year, so, would, what year did you graduate high school? 13. 13. I graduated in 10. Were you like really old for your? Yeah, old for my grade. You were old yep. for your grade? Yep, yep. Okay, because I was pretty young for my grade. Yeah. Um, You you would have been in pre-K. In yeah. the 90s? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, I can remember those classes. Like, I, I was thinking the other day, like, that October, 
like we had a page for every month and like we would do puzzles and get stickers on our month. My October, like I ran out of room for stickers. I had more than anyone else. (laughs) You were, so you do remember something about the 90s. Yeah, yeah. What did you think that I meant? Well, I I thought you meant like a certain like show that was on in the 90s or like a, a, fad like blue. I, I i was born in 92 i mean i remember when friends was on the air i i never ever saw friends in my life until like two years three years ago i i don't know if um what what channel was friends on nb no it was it it would have been i don't know dude Friends, friends in Seinfeld weren't on the same network, and Seinfeld was on NBC. I don't think I've seen Seinfeld to this day. Maybe like in a waiting I, room. I feel, I feel like Friends was on um, CBS. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know, dude. I gotta, I gotta find out though. I dropped my phone a little bit ago. We're gonna have like one of our longer podcasts. I hope that people are sticking, sticking with us. I don't know if I. My my final guess is going to be ABC, is what Friends was on. All right, let's see. I have no clue. I watched, like, by the time we got anything other, like, we got any kind of cable with a DVR, uh, the shows it I It was watched, on NBC, dude. You're telling me that NBC had Seinfeld and Friends? That's incredible. Sure. I don't like Friends at all, but I know that it was one of the most popular things ever. And if there was one show more popular than it ever, it might have been Seinfeld. But when when those were on, dude, those were huge. I I didn't see either one till three years ago. That's all I got. I don't know what you want me to say. I think I remember going to a baseball game in Pittsburgh in the 90s, and it was like very 90s. Like, like I just remember it looking, because this was in Three Rivers Stadium. I, had, I think I, I must have been in, like, preschool. Yeah, yeah, preschool. I uh, went to, a, so yeah, 90s, and uh, I had this Barney backpack, and I went to this ball game <laughs> at Three Rivers Stadium before it, you know, imploded. And, you know, they have those turnstiles to get through. <laughs> to get into the stadium i tried to walk through i was like you know yay hi with my barney backpack and i like got stuck in the turnstiles i don't know with your barney backpack yeah i think i didn't fit like or something i don't remember i think i tried to turn it and how old were you you were 19 at this time (laughs) yeah (laughs) got me um so that yeah, dude, that's totally a '90s memory. Yeah, I do um, remember Barney. I, I mean, I remember I remember a chess tournament that my dad took me to, and in in between games, we went to a video game store, and he bought me Super Mario Kart. I'm pretty sure that was in the '90s. If I had to think of memories from preschool, we also went and saw Inspector Gadget. Had to be in the nineties. Inspector Gadget was in theaters. Inspector Gadget? No. What year? <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm dude? trying to think. Of Going th- on about Inspector Gadget. That was you. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It was just the way you reacted to it. You like couldn't quite figure out Inspector Gadget. Where's the movie? Inspector Gadget, 1999. Yes, that that was in the nineties. So I remember living at least one thing in the 90s dude. no i don't remember any movies that i actually watched in the 90s i watched a lot of tim tim the home improvement was that from no that was from the aughts huh no that was from the 90s but it it was if you watch like a lot of it i'm saying no what, i didn't watch it while it was airing i watched it on dvr in you know like eighth grade that, well, that doesn't count. Why would, you even, why would you even bring that up? <laughs> That's what I was. What do you trying, mean? I why was, do I? What do I give a frick about if you've watched Home Improvement? What, if you weren't doing it in the night? That's what I'm saying. That's why I brought it up. I was like, here's an example that I watched a bunch, but I don't like remember it in the '90s. Okay, that's why I'm I brought just it saying, up. Dude, I, I moved. Got, I got vivid memories. 
watching Inspector Gadget with my dad. That was awesome. I remember... And I know it was in theaters when it came out in 1999. I remember like this blanket that I'm sure I had in the in the 90s. But that, do you remember anything that happened about the blanket in the 90s, dude? That's the thing. It like, had this t- big tear on it. Uh yeah, but like, how did it tear, dude? Like, like I, I have my Super Nintendo from the nineties. Yeah, I mean, I can like picture the house I lived in until I was two, like ever so slightly. That's, I, I remember there's like a swing set in the backyard. You lived there until you're two, and you can remember. Did you visit there afterward, or you just have the most incredible memory? I mean, maybe two and a half, three. So yeah, I don't know. Hmm. But I don't, I don't, I don't, I can't, I couldn't draw it. I can like, you know, I know you go in the door and there are steps. I think I swallowed a penny on the top floor once. Okay. That's a nineties memory. <laughs> man. Now we're talking. Yeah. Like, yeah, I can, I can just like barely envy, uh, but it's, it's, I don't even know if it's right though. Like maybe this memory I made up. There, there, there was a house that my grandma lived in while I was a kid. I would like to try to draw a map of it and then go back in there today. Oh, I think that would be wait, awesome. When, how, what age were you when you were last there? Uh, because I, I was, I was eight I, or under. Eight or under. I could totally draw a map of like the house I grew up in. I. Uh, oh man, I don't know about eight. Maybe like five or six. Five or six? You think you're wondering if if someone would remember a, a map at that point? Yeah, that that would have been probably like the dude. Old, I could sketch I you Call my... of Duty maps from you know like high school. Yeah, again, not exactly a super nineties thing, but that's, <laughs> that's cool, man. Good for you. Uh, um, yeah, that I I think I got nothing. Nothing of substance. Yeah, I think. That's, I think that's. I've been trying to make that point like I, the whole time. I, I was too young. Well, you're just coming off back to back shows. I'm still getting into the swing of things. You need to get my wind back a little bit. So we're gonna end it there. Uh, I just want to thank E Toro for sticking with us uh, throughout that whole rambling episode. That was definitely one of the loosest episodes I've ever done. <laughs> with like. When Brian and I first started, we rarely talked about, or we, we didn't really have pauses or notes, um, because we just had so many different things to talk about. You um, saying that's good? No, I'm just saying as as far as notes, and we didn't have any notes today, and I didn't know where we were going to end <laughs> up or what we were going to talk about. Yeah, this was definitely like the most rambling show we've done. All that to say, thanks for E Toro. Yeah, it's been real. Thanks buddy. to E Toro for sticking with us through that whole rambling situation, dude. And um, yeah, we're just getting back into the swing of things. But I hope this episode was uh, at least a little bit fun for you to listen to. I was assuming you had an okay time if you made it this far in. Thank you to uh, Dan Brown for helping me out. You know, usually he makes me bring my own co-host, but. Um, Brian had been on vacation and I didn't know when Brian was coming back and and Dan stepped in and did a hundred times the job that I could have done. I don't know about that. Oh yeah, dude. Um, let us know what you think about dollars and baseball. Do they exist? Would you pay 40,000 for a baseball bat going to queen Home automation, you're going to get screwed by your internet history. Barney backpack. Barney backpack. <laughs> Stairs at my grandma's house. This is going to be good for the show notes. We should have just, we should have used snips to record that audio into the show notes. And even though you just said that, the government isn't coming for you now, man. Because if that was a Google Home, I know that the Gestapo would be on their way. What do you think? Uh, what do you think we should try? Like, what's an what's a uh, obscure product? Me- oh, 
What? Um, not meth, dude. An obscure product to try? Yeah, I mean... I don't know, dude. Something we haven't talked about in like three months. Or phrased another way, what were we talking about exactly three months ago? With your magic memory over there. What do you... What are you getting at, dude? I'm trying to close the podcast, and you're asking me what we talked about three months ago? Birdhouses. I love birdhouses, dude. All right, keep an eye on your ads. I uh, Man, I just can't get enough of them, you know? There's like birds and these houses, and they live in these birdhouses. So you're putting on a show for Google to try to get it to fake serve me birdhouse no, ads. Now they... Now they they're on to us. All right, dude. Can you can you let me <laughs> can you let me finish here? Yeah. These I'm not people doing do anything. not want to be listening. I already closed out the show. This is this is like an yeah, epilogue bonus right content. Now. That's great. We should have made him pay extra for this. Okay, dude. Jamie, in post, you got to go back. And <laughs> when I was trying to cut the show, actually turn it off and then put this new thing on as bonus segment and make him pay extra. Don't make them pay extra, man. Nobody wants to pay to listen to you or me. I really have to pee, though. <laughs> okay. I don't, I don't know how much bonus time we bonus can Bonus time this over. We'll see you next week. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. What if at the beginning it was good night and now it's good morning? It could very well be, man, if, if we don't let the people go soon. All right. Anyways, have a good one. Bye.